revved up, ready to go with me to watch James Creedon. How are you, sir? Very well, Mark. Great to Thank see you. you. Now Thank then, you. Uh, you've been looking at reactions to Donald Trump's Oval Office speech. Yeah on the southern border. That's the border with the US and Mexico, of course. He's just stormed out of talks over That's the Democrats right. over there, hasn't he? So give us some more of the reactions. Polarised, well, I imagine. The latest is, uh, he tweeted, just left a meeting with Chuck and Nancy, a total waste of time. So, I mean, that, that kind of sets the Chuck tone. Chuck Schumer, Nancy Pelosi. That's right. Uh, so that sets the tone for kind of all of the uh, the, the comments that preceded. Uh, in, in, in other words, it remains as polarised as ever. Yeah. Now, we, we saw it coming, um, essentially, uh, with... with uh, Democratic leaders call for equal airtime to rebut Trump's immigration speech uh, because there was a sense that it was going to be full of malice and, and misinformation. So prior to the speech ever taking place, this was the reading of things. And you can see in the headlines, as I said, that polarisation, that uh, split. Trump declares border crisis. Democrats say he is chosen fear. So an entirely kind of uh, opposing uh, reading of things. Uh, this is the Washington Post saying that he tried to create the border crisis. In fact, that border crisis is put in inverted commas by The Guardian. So a lot of scepticism uh, uh, as to whether or not that crisis exists at all in the first place. Fact checking, Mark, quite a bit of fact checking of uh, what he, he said in the speech. This was the buzzword, fact checking. It was it? indeed. Uh, New York Times, not, not surprising that they were doing it. Fox News was doing it as well. A couple of elements that came through. That part is perhaps surprising because they're usually very clement with uh, President Trump. Statistics show that there is less violent crime by the undocumented immigrant population than by the general population. This is, uh, so Trump issued kind of scary warnings about uh, the murders, murders by immigrants and whatnot, and the statistics just don't bear it up, essentially. Also, drugs being imported across the southern border. In fact, there's a far more heroin that gets into the US via sea and uh, seaports and airports, not across that southern border. So the fact-checking was sort of bringing up those uh, inconsistencies, inaccuracies and whatnot. Uh, this is the Daily Beast, the myth of the criminal immigrant. So again, he was equating illegal immigration with violent crime that actually statistically in study after study doesn't bear up either to scrutiny. So there were a lot of shortcuts in that speech. Uh, and just very quickly, uh, some people saying that the speech itself uh, was simply, uh, if you like, um, a, a, a smoke screen to distract from all the other problems in, in his administration. That's what this particular political cartoon here is suggesting. So now, if you look at these things in a cold, logical way, journalistically, and you come up with something that Trump and his team disagree with, mm. they call it fake news normally, don't they? Yes. And I imagine his supporters will be seeing all of that and listening to you right now and thinking maybe just that, because I imagine their reaction to Trump's speech, very different. I mean, you, you really are dealing with two uh, kind of uh, completely uh, opposing universes. The president's speech was, uh, Trump's speech was presidential, compelling and true. So uh, we, we have, I mean, two entirely different readings of things there. That's a, a, a Republican Senator Lindsey Graham. Uh, meanwhile, a lot of people, uh, instead of, you know, uh, uh, saying how truthful Trump was, they were attacking uh, Nancy Pelosi and, and, and Chuck Schumer. You can see them here standing side by side. Uh, this is a Fox News commentary saying that they're pathological liars and have done nothing for border security in 40 years. Now, the... the Pathological liars. Yeah, it's, it's strong language on both sides. I wonder, I wonder uh, how they've researched that, what they base it on. Sorry, sorry. Right, no, well, I mean, it's, 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 yeah, it's yeah. I suppose, it's very much opinion. Now, the optics here got a lot of comment. Uh, this kind of goes way off uh, policy and whatnot, but the fact that they were standing side by side I had a lot of people sort of saying things unfair, things like senior match, whatnot, but also a very much a mom and dad type image. Now, I wonder, was that done on purpose? Because they were standing really side by side. They didn't have any space between them. Was it to sort of give this parental uh, authority versus Trump's petulance, as, he, as it is often depicted? We're not mad. We're just disappointed. Your father and I are going to take turns <laughs> talking to you now. And indeed... It, <laughs> The, the one com comparison that was brought up again and again and again and again was uh, this a very famous uh, American Gothic painting by Grant Wood. And I think, again, it's just the, the, the image of a man and a woman standing side by side. But, uh, you know, the Gothic aspect, the kind of grisly aspect, the cr somewhat creepy aspect was, I think, what some uh, anti-Democrat uh, individuals were uh, getting at. Now, this is Donald Trump saying thank you so much for... Talk about filtering. All the many nice comments regarding my Oval Office speech, a very interesting experience. He'd be well advised not to read the comments there because it, it kind of goes downhill fast. I wonder what the people who may not get paid this Friday will be thinking here eh, because right. of that government shutdown. No, now no. then, let's move on. Or we'll move back to France. Yes. There we go. Yeah. Emmanuel Macron left the Elysee Palace today to open a handball centre. 
but he couldn't escape the gilet jaune, he the couldn't. yellow vests. He couldn't. Here he is. So this is the handball. It's, uh, I believe, uh, the World Championship starting tomorrow. Sure. Uh, the French uh, female handball team did very well in December and they received in the Elite. French have, have a stellar reputation in right. handball. They definitely did really well in that. And so this was a handball centre being uh, opened in Kritai in the southern suburbs. Uh, he met, amongst others, uh, handicapped handball players as well. And, uh, well, it all seemed pretty good in the official photos, but actually, uh, as this headline says, he attempted to sort of put his nose prudently outside the door of the Elysee Palace and if he did he was met with scenes such as this. Now there, there were no scenes showing the President's car or anything like that coming in direct contact with uh, the Gilets Jaunes or whatnot. but uh, BFM TV here, uh, this one taking a little while to load but they did that's not the right link, we'll move past it but let's just say uh, there, there were clashes in the streets uh, and I think um, uh, various uh, this this video here shows the extent to which uh, there were uh, not a huge amount but I think it was around 150 different protesters uh, and they did clash with uh, with uh, with uh, riot police uh, who were trying to I suppose secure the area before the arrival of President Macron today so it wasn't a huge crowd but it's it's somewhat embarrassing Mark from the point of view of this being the first visit by the president to any sort of a, a happening or an occasion in a month. The last time he went to puy en velay in Auvergne mm. uh, because a, a prefecture was burnt down there yeah. and his car was sort of, he was booed and the car was uh, uh, followed by people running after it. And apparently, according to one RTL, uh, RTL radio analysis of this, uh, he was traumatised by that. Uh, certain of his ministers uh, have, uh, have said that the episode was like an electroshock for the president uh, because I guess he realised the extent to which the Gilets Jaunes are uh, extremely riled up and angry, justifiably or unjustifiably, uh, and that his person has become the target for much of that. So uh, this that trip on the 4th of December traumatised him. This was his first trip outside the door in a month, and there was still uh, on a degree of unrest, even if he didn't get caught up and, directly. And that is set to continue. Yeah. James, thank you very much indeed. James from Thanks.